opening remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The Dean, Faculty of uh, Biosciences. Foundation Dean, my based Dean, my home Dean. The Chairman, Inaugural Lecture Committee, Professor Richard Wakwe, and members of uh, his uh, committee, deans of faculties here present, directors present, heads of department here present, The inaugural lecturer and the beloved wife, the extended family of Amadi, our viewers. Ladies and gentlemen, here once again today to listen and partake in an inaugural lecture to be delivered by an erudite professor of birthday. I think uh, this is the third inaugural lecture in that department. I remember the first was given it Professor Anaso. The second one by a very good friend, Professor Ralph uh, Okibo. Yeah. I'm just recognizing you as the second of that department. And uh, today it will be the turn of a uh, of, uh, Professor Judah Amadi. I most sincerely thank the Vice Chancellor for and uh, the inaugural lecture committee for keeping the temple running, for hitting the ground. This is the third week running, and uh, for the past for three weeks now, every Thursday. We have been having the inaugural lectures here. And I think uh, this is uh, unprecedented in any Nigerian university. And so today, our erudite professor, Professor Jude Amadi, will tell us about um, host pathogen interaction and the plant defenses. It is not only human beings. When there is pathogen entering the body, yeah, we know that uh, the body also reacts to the invasion of the pathogen. So plants, we are told, also react to pathogens uh, going into them. And so that is why, while we take care of our health, we also take care of uh, plant health. And when we take care of plant health, I think uh, the society will be cleaner. The society will be cleaner. But let me not uh, um, preempt what uh, the inaugural lecturer will talk today. And so you are welcome and let us uh, sit with rapt attention to and listen to Professor Jude is a job for Amade as he does and what he knows best. Thank you very much. You are welcome.
thank you very much, Adia Vachenselon, ably represented by Professor FJC Odibo. Thank you for the remark. Now is the time for citation. And I want to call on Professor Kenneth Ekwalo to come and give the citation of the inaugural lecturer of today. Chairman, the Vice Chancellor, please permit me to stand on the existing protocol. I welcome you today. I want to invite Professor Jude Ezejo Farmadi to come out for his citation. Please put your hands together for him. You're welcome. On that Wednesday, August 26th of a certain year was born a son to Ozo Egodigwe and Lolo Amukuja Amade. That son is this professor, Professor Jude Ezechofa Amade. He is a child of destiny. Because the mother, it was told, had insisted on not having any other child after Professor Amadi's elder sister, Esther. The story had it that Professor Amadi's mother lost her first six children consecutively. She later had four surviving children, one son and three daughters. At that point, she decided not to, to have any child again. She gave up, but it took the pleading and encouragement of late Chief M. I. Amade, Professor Amade's uncle, who pleaded with her to give a chance and get another one. Nobody knows the day of his divine visitation. She took the advice um, and she, she accepted it and got conceived. When she conceived, it, the resultant effect or the resultant conception is this professor that is standing beside you. You can see how this last uh, child that is born in August is a child of destiny. Professor Amadi Jude Ezejofo is an accomplished scholar. A professor of botany, Namdiaskiwe University, Oka. Professor Amadi attended St. John Cross Seminary in Suka and will be to become a Catholic priest. But faith has something else for him. After leaving seminary, Professor Amadi proceeded to the University of Nigeria, Suka, where he read botany and was one of the best three graduates in his set and made second class upper division. That time, first class was a very scarce commodity. Professor Amadi did his NYC at University of Ife, now Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, where he served with the, the present governor of Anambra State, Professor Charles Chukuma Soludo, and Professor Ellis Apunonu of our geology department. Immediately after his NYC, he proceeded to the University of Ibadan, where he did his master's and PhD in plant pathology. So he never worked until he bought his PhD, courtesy of his supportive brother, Chief C. A. Amari, who is sitting with us here. I want to see, see, please wave to us, Chief Amade. Wave to us, wave to us, please. Please to hand together for him. You are welcome, sir. You are welcome, sir. You are welcome, sir. God will bless you. Since after qualification, Professor Madi had a number of work exposures. Just the same month, 
He defended his PhD. Rosamadi gained employment as an assistant lecturer at the University of Ellori, Para State. When he presented his certificate, he was adjusted to lecturer two. Rosamadi had been botany used a unit coordinator several times under the Department of Biological Sciences and later became the first head of department when botany became a full department in University of Ellori. He also took the new department through her first accreditation program and obtained full accreditation. Why at University of Ellori? Professor Amadi benefited from three postdoctoral fellowships that exposed him to excellent research opportunities. In 1995, Professor Amadi was sponsored by the NUC and the World Bank to Brook University, St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. At Brook, Professor Amadi worked under Professor M.S. Monaca and on host interaction of a pongus, people's peplocephalus virginalia. In 1999, Professor Amanda saw himself at the U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA, in Maryland, USA, at the invitation of Dr. Dong Luster, yet for another postdoctoral fellowship. At USDA, Professor Amanda worked in a team with the fungus Pusarum osporum, FSP, Erythrospoly, Erythroxili, and a pathogen. Erythroxylum coca, which is the cocaine that we, we, we know about. Also in September 1999, Professor Madi came home briefly from Maryland to see his darling wife and the only daughter Chidema before proceeding to the University of the Orange Free State, Bloom, Fort, Bloom 14, South Africa, where yet another postdoctoral. So Professor Amadi can be seen or can be said to be an international plant pathologist. On July 27, 2010, Professor Amadi transferred his service from the University of Illori to Namde Askewe University as a senior lecturer. In January 2013, he became the head of the Department of, department of Botany and by November 2013, he saw himself resuming work at Shell Petroleum Development Company, SBDC, Port Harcourt, as a sabbatical staff. At Shell, Rosamadi worked as environmental impact on environmental impact assessment in the environmental department. Rosamadi has been a member of NUC accreditation team to a number of universities, including the Federal University, Lafia, Nasrawa State, March 2021. Usman Federal University, Sokoto, December 2021. Professor Madi has served in several university com committees, both at the University of Illori and Namdia Square University. Here at UNISIC, he was the chairman, faculty of biosciences annual lecture committee in 2018-2019 section. Professor Amadi has served as external examiner and assessor to many universities, including University of Ibado, Federal University of Technology, MENA, Enugu State University of Te Science and Technology, ESUT, Kogi State University, Aimba, Chukwemekodimegu University, Uli, Delta State University, Abraka, and Osman and Federal University, Sokoto, Professor Madi has been an adjunct professor at different times at Paul University, Oka, Enugu State University of Technology, Esut, and Godfrey Okoye University, Uguomu, Nike Enugu. He has also served both in the university and community in various capacities. For instance, Professor Madi was the coordinator of the committee that brokered the land lease agreement for the establishment of the Maris University in Abakume, Udi, 
local government of Enugu State yet to take off. Prof. Samadi has many scholarly publications in both local and international journals and served as book editor. Prof. Samadi has supervised many PhD and master candidates, of which two of them are professors today. You can see the list of Prof. Samadi's contribution can be endless. But for want of time, let us leave that for another day. Prof. Prof. Jude S.H. Farmadi is happy and fulfilled in his marriage to Dr. Eugenia Adamadi, and God has also blessed him with three children. Noble ladies and gentlemen, permit me to end this citation by quoting what the Bible says in Proverbs 22, 29. Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before me, men. This is that diligent man that I brought to you today. It is my pleasure to introduce to you my partner in the school of sanity, my friend and my law, in the person of Professor Jude S. Jofo Amade. I, I want to establish a protocol on which I'm going to stay to deliver this lecture. Because without a strong protocol, so maybe aborted midway. So I will establish a solid protocol. The Vice Chancellor, sir, and Chairman of this occasion, the Deputy Vice Administration, the registrar, the other principal officers of the university, the provost, college of the postgraduate school, my dean, dean of faculty of biosciences, other deans of other departments, my HOD, department of botany, other HODs, distinguished invited guests, and friends of the university, colleagues from other universities and other higher institutions, great UNISIC students, other members of the university community, the eminent Friends Club of Aquacumense, my old boys, John Cross Seminary, Nsoka. Members of the Amadi family here present, ladies and gentlemen. So this is the protocol. Yes. <laughs> this is the protocol. So this is what I'm going to be speaking on. And uh, my DVC and my professor has already talked about it. Professor Divo, FJC, is an all-rounder. So uh, that's my topic. That's my topic as it is. So that's Judah Madi. Yes, so that protocol has been done. Then we want to talk about the preamble, the preamble to this lecture. 
I want to say that I'm very happy. I have a privilege and honor to stand here this day to deliver this eighth ninth lecture of this university. And I want to say that this lecture is coming nearly eight years after I've been appointed professor. Yes, yes. Also, I may need to inform you that I for this lecture on the 22nd on the, on the I applied for this lecture on the February 22nd 2017 you can imagine what i'm saying 2017 i applied to deliver this lecture so i was first appeared to deliver this lecture on December 2nd 2021 so you have seen how things turn and turn and turn and we are on this date, August 17. And you will agree with me that many have gone. Between that date and now, many have gone. So I can't thank God enough for giving me this opportunity to still deliver my lecture. So, want to look at the introduction. The aim of this lecture is to showcase what I've been doing in the university system all these years. I need to give an account of what I've been doing all these years. I also have the plan that I want to make this audience more literate in the area of plant pathology. By the time you finish listening to this lecture, there are a lot of things you will get. If you get nothing, you will have to get that plants produce many toxic substances. And there is a reason for this production. And that reason is self-defense. And you, you remember that uh, defense is part of this lecture. If you look at this, topic, you see that plant defense is part of this lecture. So that's why we're talking in this direction. I want everybody to take something home. So that's part of why I'm doing this. So we want to look at who is a plant pathologist. Who is a plant pathologist? That's what I am. So, but who is, the, who is a plant pathologist? A plant pathologist is a professional who specializes in plant health, much as a physician specializes in human health, or a veterinarian in animal health. Keeping plants healthy requires an understanding of the agents that cause diseases in plants. So what do those, what do plant pathologists do? What do they do? The plant pathologist strives to keep plants healthy and free from diseases. That's part of what we are doing. The plant pathologist contributes to stronger economy, safe foods, clean environments, health of workers in farms, gardens, and uh, landscape. They also diagnose, plant pathologists also diagnose plant diseases and advise farmers on control strategies. These diagnoses and advice formed part of my research. So if I tell you that my wife, you understand what I mean. Thank you so much. So where are we? We're here. OK. So this, this advice and uh, whatever, whatever, is part of what I did in South Africa. And I want to say that it was in that place that I had the opportunity of having many disease plant materials to look at. And I proffered solutions to them and gave them control strategies. And it did work. Finally, you want to look at plant pathologists as people that teach in universities 
and colleges. And that's what I'm doing in UNICEF, teaching. So all my other students, what we do is to teach too, to the younger generations of plant pathologists. Okay, pathogenic causes of plant diseases. A plant disease has been defined as a physiological disorder. Physiological disorder that comes with malfunctioning of many parts of the plant. And then there are different types of diseases in plants. There are diseases that are caused by living organisms. When a disease is caused by living organisms, that is referred to as a pathological disease. If a disease is caused by environmental cause, pollutants, herbicides, toxicity of herbicides and all this stuff, water stress, that disease is referred to as physiological disorder. So when we're looking at pathogenic causes of diseases, we're looking at bacteria, we're looking at fungi, we're looking at fungal virus, nematodes, mycoplasmas, protozoa, and then parasitic higher plants. All these are uh, things that cause diseases in plants. Then we want to look at the mechanisms, the mechanisms of plant infection. For infection to take place, there are different steps that have to be accomplished. And in this case, you have to start with recognition. Recognition is a process the host has to recognize the where the pathogen has to recognize the host. So that's recognition. And a whole lot of factors are involved in that host recognition. So for the research I did in Canada under Professor Manocha, because he was working on host recognition. Then comes penetration. Penetration is defined as the initial entry of a pathogen into the host. That's penetration. So there are different ways pathogens can penetrate. And then you now have infection. And people will be wondering, what is this infection? When I ask my students, what is infection? As I teach, they mean infection is unwellness. I say, what is unwellness? Infection is the establishment of the pathogen within the host. If an organism enters any plant and is not able to Establish it cannot cause infection. That is the process. That's the process. It cannot cause infection. Then follows development of the pathogen within the host. This development involves formation of structures, infection pegs, hostoria, which this pathogen will send into the body of the host and uh, absorb nutrients. So these are the processes involved in. In this, then we're looking at the disease triangle. Disease triangle is a triangle that is meant to tell you what and what and what must be in place for infection to occur. So in this triangle, this fig one, you will see the host there, you will see the see the host here, you see the pathogen, see the environment. So there has to be host, there has to be the pathogen. And the environment must be favoring to that particular pathogen. So these are these. Under this circumstance, there will be disease here. So this simple expression of this concept. So this host has to be susceptible. When you say susceptible, you are talking about the opposite of resistance. So the host has to be susceptible. The pathogen has to be pathogenic and very virulent and produce a lot of infective propagos. And then the environment has to be favoring. When you're talking about environment, you are looking at temperature, pressure, pH, and all this stuff. And then this other fig two is the dynamic expression of this disease triangle. This triangle shows that there has to be contributions. There has to be contributions from this host pathogen and environment. So if you see here now, you see this circle is for the environment. So it will contribute a portion here. Then the host will also contribute a portion here. Then the pathogen contributes a portion here. So it is at that point, the pathogen, the host, 
and environment contribution meet. That's where you have the disease. So when the pathogen and the environment meet alone, there will be no disease and the other way around too. So there has to be that contribution from host, pathogen and environment for the disease to occur. Then my research reports. So I want to say that my research is focused on Secosphera, leaf spot, and target leaf spot of cowpea. And cowpea is simply beans. The beans we eat is what we call cowpea in English. And in our in botanical name is Vigna unguiculata. So Secosphera leaf spot is caused by that uh, Secosphera. The target spot is caused by the Corinospora casicola. A leaf spot is a limited, a limited, discolored, and uh, whatever, whatever portion on the this thing. So we're going to have it there. So uh, extensive accession studies in plate two. You're going to see it. You also, I also show you the other plates. This is a leaf spot. This leaf spot of hibiscus caused by pseudomonas. And then this other one is leaf spot of cowpea beans caused by Corinoscora casicola. So these are the symptoms we have gotten here. Then some aspects of uh, and biology of uh, cowpea. We want to say that cowpea is nearly a perfect match for the African soil and the African people. So that perfect match is based on the nutrient contents of this cowpea. There are some things that you can't get in cowpea, you get it in other cereals. So when you combine cereals and cowpea, it's like you're getting a perfect meal for a typical African. So for example, lysine, a lot of stuff. So the tender leaves are also used as food. In many other parts of Africa, you can see people preferring the fodder. To the beans. In Nigeria, we prefer the beans. In Mali and other places, we prefer the fodder for animal feed. So this is the accession study at ITA Ibadan, of your states. That's where I did my work. That's the field. That's cowpea here. So looking at the major diseases of cowpea, major diseases of cowpea are anthracnose, ascochaita. Okay, no. Yes, major disease of cowpea are these anthracnose, ascochaita, brown, blotch, the cospiral leaf spot, this one we're talking about today, the macrofomina, patotora, stem rot, and septorial leaf spots. So, all these things are the major diseases of cowpea. Then we'll look at the less important disease of cowpea, and that's uh, cowpea rust caused by uromyces, faciolae, false mort, caused by protomycopsis, faciolae, target spot, caused by corinospora cascola, web blight, caused by corticium solani, and then vas vas vascular weight, caused by xerium osporum. So all these things are here. We have the plates. We have the plates. So this is cowpea leaf. You see here, you'll be seeing spots. These are the things I want to show you. It's not just leaf, I'm showing you, I'm showing you the spots. So that's the leaf spot I studied. Then at the back of an infected leaf, at the back of an infected leaf, there is heavy sporulation. This is what you see. If you get an infected healthy leaf, you turn the underside. This is what you see. Heavy sporulation that you pick it out. You now see the organisms responsible. So this plate four is looking at Corinospora cascola, the cause of target leaf spot. So you can see, you can see the conidia. Some of them are in chains. You can see three conidia here in chain here. There is another conidium here that is on top of a conidium four. So these are things I got from my research. And then this target spot too, is called target spot because of the characteristic symptoms. You can see this, it has a concentric ring in. 
So you see that there's a kind of concentric ring in here, even if it's not very clear, but it is in, intended. Then we see pathogen penetration avenues. So people will be wondering, how do pathogens enter their hosts? So this is it. Pathogen can enter their host through natural openings. It can enter through wounds. They also enter even intact surfaces. And uh, when you talk about these natural openings, you are looking at stomata, lenticels, hydratodes, all those stuff. These are the avenues. This for wound. When any plant has wound, it has predisposed it to infection because pathogens will enter. I'm sure that people here practice plant pathology even without knowing. Because, for example, now, if people buy heaps of yam from the market, they will go home and start looking at those ones that have wound. Is it not true? They start looking at those ones that have wound and pick them out and tell their family, please, let us start eating from here. That's plant pathology. Because if you don't do it, infection will come from there. So that is entering through wounds. Then some organisms are so strong and fortified that they enter intact surfaces. Surfaces that are intact, organisms have specialized in a way to enter them. And they do this by producing toxins, enzymes. These enzymes will soften the surface. And then these pathogens will use some little force and push in. So then we're looking at the entry of pathogens into cowpea leaves. So this is a typical stoma. This is a typical stoma here. This is the guard cell. These two guard cells are the things that control stomata opening and closing. The subsidiary cells are there. So some pathogens enter through this stoma. And we are also told too that some pathogens even enter stoma even when it is closed. Even closed stoma, some pathogens specialize and force themselves in and enter. So in all the studies I've done, I use this variety IT84S2246-4. It's an ITA variety. That is that IT there. So all the ones I used. I discovered that stomata are more concentrated on the lower surface of the leaf, the lower surface of the leaf. All the particular varieties I looked at, that is what I saw. So this is the stomata. Even as a layman, even as a layman, you call any layman and say, start counting this. If you count it, you get more in this place than you will get here. This is the upper surface. The upper surface have stomata, but the stomata are more sparse. This is the lower distance uh, that has stomata, and they are under. So there is a kind of adaptation there. Because if stoma, or stomata, as we call them, if they are to face upwards, a whole lot of spores will be falling in. See not? Yes, but nature made it that they are more under. So for a pathogen to find their way through the stomata under, they really have to struggle for it. Then penetration through wounds, like we said. There are many organisms that enter through wood that I use the yam to show you an example. And those organisms that enter through wounds are called weak pathogens. Sometimes they call them opportunistic pathogens. The reason is that in the absence of wound, they cannot enter. So they are not strong pathogens. They are called opportunistic pathogens. Some fungi enter like that. And then, well, I told you that some organisms can enter even intact surfaces. So all these things are part of what we saw in our study. And then looking at spore germination and penetration, I studied spores of Secospora and Target. And uh, we found out that there are different types of germination. You have apica germination. You also have uh, the other one, intercalary. It is apica if the germination is from the end cells. 
then it will be intercalary if the germination is from the cells in between. So that's what we have here. So frequently we will see all this in place. So let's see the exactly. This is the this is the conidium. This is the conidium like this. And this is the germination. You can see that it's germinating from the middle cells. So this is called intercalary. So you can see two gems too here. You can also see this one. This one is germinating from the end here. So this is apical. So this one is germinating from the middle cells, this uh, intercalary. So germination in secospora cruenta spores are both apical and intercalary. So these are stomata penetration. So you see it, stomata penetration here. You see these bunches here. These bunches here are conidia of secospora, plugging stomata, trying to force themselves inside. When I did this study, it reminded me something. When I was in school, I used to go to Lagos to my brother's house. We go to watch football of the game. There will be a stampede. So my brother, the man sitting here now, he makes sure that he has me in front of him. Because a lot of people can die. Because everybody wants to live. So this is what this tomata that is here. This is what the conidia are trying to do. Forcing themselves into that stomata. That's why you are seeing that black, all those black spots. These are spores. Then you can also see here, these are spores puffing out from stomata. They have entered, they have not entered fully. So you can see them scattered like that. Tissue colonization. Ah, okay. You have a timer. Thank you so much. So tissue colonization. So we want to find out if an organism enters this plant, where do they stay? That's colonization. So we're not telling you that when this organism enter, they occupy this other layer. You can see it here. This, you can see an arrow here. This is a tissue here, intact tissue, but this is the point of entry. So because of that point of entry, you can see that all the cells here, you can't make anything out of it. It's different from the cells here. And this is the control. This is the healthy leaf. The cells, you can see the cells, you can see the demarcations, but not here. This is where the organisms occupy. The gospel infected leaf showing that. Seed pathology. I investigated the effect. Of seed, cowpea. I mean, second like major thing we need in cowpea seeds. So, if you seeds are infested, we want to see what we stand to lose. And so, I did analysis of cowpea seeds that were infested with Secospora cruenta. And I came up with the observation that nutrient contents were reduced. Nutrient contents were reduced in cowpea infested seeds. And so, the lesson is that we need to at any point in time, try to reduce or avoid completely infestation of seeds. Because these are part of the things we are supposed to be doing. So we saw in that those seeds, we isolated many organisms, including Coletotrichum, including this Secosora, Aswagilus flavus, Aswagilus fumigatus, and Aswagilus niger. So interestingly, this Aspergillus flavus is a very interesting organism that if they tell you they see it in bees, you should be afraid. Because we know that uh, Aspergillus flavus is notorious for production of some toxins. And as I see here, the work I did with her in 2020, we got aflatoxin B1 and B2 from the maize we worked with. So that is part of it. So we saw, we saw aspergillus flavus in beans. So there's need to worry there. 
These are the affected cowpea pods. These are the affected cowpea pods. These are the pods. These are the, the discs. So I isolated by plating these seeds, the cowpea seeds, on agar plugs. These things are agar plugs. You know, sometimes you want to save your medium, you put them into plugs and put your seed on it. So this is what we did to get those organisms I listed for you. So that's it. This is Coletotrichum. These are the Cite, a several of Coletotrichum. So these are numerous conidia of Secospora cruenta. Host pathogen, that's host plant defense now. So generally, like we said, plants will always defend themselves. And uh, defense here is like, can be constitutive. Defense can be constitutive, in which case is depending on structure barriers. Another part of defense is biochemical, where plants produce chemicals. In this other place, plants can produce structures that will not let the organism to enter. We know that in some organisms, you see some plants having spines, thorns, and prickles. All those things are defenses. All those things are defenses. So when they don't produce those physical defenses, they produce the chemical defenses. So this is it. So and when you come to these defenses, defenses can be pre-existing. It can also be induced. These defenses, there are some of them that are already in the plant before invasion, and there are some of them that are formed as a result of invasion. So in many Nigerian homes now, you see people building their houses and putting bog ladder. Have you? So that's pre-existing. So, but, you know, so that's trying to get them off. So these are what plants also do. They have pre-existing barriers. They have induced barriers that will come as a result of invasion. So these are what we have here. here. So what we have here. So plants can react in a very systematic way. If they want to defend themselves, you can get an organism penetrating a host. Then if that host reacts in a hypersensitive manner, what that host will do is that all the cells around that invading pathogen will die. All the cells around the invading pathogen will die. So food supply will be cut off. So that penetrating pathogen will equally die. So that's defense. But that is hypersensitive reaction on the part of plants. So disease resistance, like I said, is an outcome of defense. Disease resistance is an outcome of defense. So in the course of my work, I screened about 78 lines of cowpea, trying to see which ones are resistant to this organism we are talking about and which ones are susceptible. So 78 lines I screened. And I got different results about it. So these are the different types of resistance. You have true resistance. You have apparent resistance. Under true resistance, you have horizontal. You also have vertical. So when it is horizontal, it is targeted towards many organisms. And under that circumstance, it's not as effective. But if it is vertical, it is targeted towards specific organisms, and that one is more efficient. So under apparent resistance, as the name applies, it's apparent, but it's not really resistant. Under apparent, you can have disease tolerance. Disease tolerance is a situation where a plant is infected, but it manages to produce crop. It has infection, it tolerates it, and still comes up with a a yield that you harvest. Then when it is disease escape, when it is disease escape, it's like this organism can attack this crop under normal circumstances. But if you, the farmer, target that this uh, 
pathogen will not end season and you do your cropping. Your cropping will come up, grow, and pass. It is passing because there are no pathogens. So that one is called disease escape. It's not resistance. It's just escaping because the pathogen is not available in season. So these are part of the things I did. Screening this is in the garden at ITA. So, and this is the field at ITA too. One of my brothers was there, Augustine. Are you were there? Stand up now. Uh -huh. He visited me at Ipado. And I took him to ITA, took him to the field. After he left, he was asking me, that field, where will you go again? I said, where you come again? <laughs> So all these things are resistance. So we're now trying to re-echo why do plants produce toxic products? We're now saying that plants produce toxic products because they have to defend themselves. In my local parlance, in my local parlance, as in OCC Nochiroso, na na pa ma. So, it cannot move. So, it can't be a book. No, madam. I will not marry her, Melo. Oh, okay, Nabia, or Dodge, or OCC does not have that ability. So, they have produced toxic photos to defend themselves. A human being can run away if he sees his enemy. The plant cannot run, so it has to devise a way of protecting itself. And that is why we're talking about this defense. So why do plants produce toxic products? So is, is exactly what we have said. So I want to talk about my contributions for research. I hope I'm keeping time. Yeah. It's more. My contributions to research. My contributions to research as they are, I want to say that uh, I've also added to what we have on our table a way of diet through the control studies I've done on cowpea. Plant disease control studies I've done in cowpea has added more protein on our table. I have successfully identified some resistant cowpea lines. We saw the field. So that result came out with some lines, which are distributed to farmers. Say, go on with this variety. You will gain maximally from it. So I've done research in that area, and it has gained some, some people have gained from it. So we also say that cowpea seeds, which are the main thing we eat, if we can do enough to avoid infestation, which I've studied and shown you, we are going to gain for it too. It's part of my contribution. In the course of my research, I have also established the host range of Fusarium osporum and Aspergillus niger in the plant family Sulanesee. So this study and this knowledge can be explored for plant disease control in that particular family. I've also identified a few diseases in the new cross program in Blue Fountain. Like I told you, that I saw a lot, a lot of plant materials. I've identified a lot there and I've given my advice and it worked. Also at USDA in USA, like uh, Professor Kuala read out, I worked in a team. That team was working on the control of erythrozylum coca. Erythrozylum coca is cocaine plant. Yes. And people were not to listen to government, so they move into bushes and cultivate the plant. So in the lab now, we work on fusarium and produce fusarium in large quantity and put it into knapsack sprayer and they use helicopter and spread those their feet. So, everyone to listen. 
we also know what to do. So it's part of what I did. Through research, I was able to establish that stomata distribution in Capi is more abundant beneath. And lastly, I don't want to take it for granted. For granted, I've also produced a lot of personnel in this my field. Yes, I produce a lot of personnel in this my field. I have two professors that were my students. So it doesn't have to be taken for granted. So acknowledgement, I want to acknowledge God. I want to acknowledge God for giving me this opportunity. God for giving me this opportunity. Because many have wished to present, but they did not. So it's not that I'm too smart, I'm intelligent. It's just grace of God. Between 2nd of December 2021 and now, a whole lot of things could have happened to me. But God said, no, you must present. And I'm presenting. So I thank God. I thank God. To the Amadi family, I want to thank my family. Because if I say it, I can say that I gained most in my family, more than any individual. If somebody goes to school, does first degree to PhD without working, you'll be wondering, is my brother here? Is see he Amadi? Stand up again, please. Yes, from first degree to PhD, I never worked. Uh, you can sit down. I never worked. And I was itching to work. I was applying to work while I was at Ibadan. I wrote applications to Enugu to get work. My uncle, my late uncle, Chifema Yamade, may he still rest in peace. My uncle would ask me, Jude. Nanya you will make history. I will buy a barrel for you. You will post be any holder that aqua barrel. That's what the man told me. So in the application, he sees here. So I thank their mother family. Thank you so much. So then now the Azikiwa University, I want to thank this university for giving me this opportunity to come home. Because like I told you, I came from Ilori. I spent most of my academic life at Hillary. What I'm doing here is just completion. It's completion I'm doing here. So I want to thank the university for giving me that opportunity. Uh, Professor Onyago, we were at Hillary together now. <laughs> so I want to say that there are many more people that want to come home, but they have not gotten the opportunity. So I thank the university for giving me that opportunity. And I especially want to mention that it was Professor Eboka that was on seat then. So if you see him, please thank him for me. I'm also grateful to the staff and students of Botany Department, where I belong, for their friendship and support. I can say with ease that Botany is doing well. Is it not? I can say with ease. It's a good place to be. So voting is doing well. My committee, this inaugural lecture committee, is formed by all the staff in Botany, teaching and non-teaching. That's how we do it, teaching and non-teaching. Everybody is there. Asking me, Prof, what will I do? I say, go to Bibian. Bibian is the chairman or chairwoman, I don't know, uh, of the welfare committee. 
So we thank you so much, Bodhi Department. I'm also grateful to my former students for their respect, for their love, everything. Thank God. Most prominent among them are these two professors I've told you. One of them was on the way to come for this inaugural lecture, but Faith said no. So they are very close points. So I told him, please go back. I'll be more at ease that you are safe. Coming from an inaugural lecture, and I'll start telling stories. So thank God for my former students, Professor Debola. Also thank God for Professor, the other guy, yes. So Gani Yolaho is one of my students too. All these people lecturers and the Garoba. They are the ones that I left the department at Elori. They are holding forth there. Here at uh, Oka, I'm managing this place with uh, Adeze. Where's Adeze? Dr. Adeze. Okay. Then Dr. Madukolo, Boniface. I'm a mobile. So physical planning. You know him now. Uh -huh. He's my product. Then Ole Dibe. Ole Dibe. Ole Dibe. Uh, we are the ones here. So we are managing plant pathology here. I also want to acknowledge, even though I'm presenting, Professor Kibo. It's the same pathology. Professor. When I was named, I was naming those that passed through me. But I need to acknowledge him. He's my friend. To my club, the Eminent Friends Club of Akpakume, I want to welcome you and thank you. When I gave you the news in OG, you received it with so much enthusiasm. I want to believe that you are here in mass. The Eminent, you want to Eminent. Eminent. Friends Club. Yes, you are welcome. Thank you for coming. So, of course, now I look at university, I look at my community. No community can never. Yes. My old boys, my old boys of St. John Cross Seminary, Great Cross Eyes. Where are you now? Great Cross Eyes. Great Cross Eyes. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for coming. You can sit down. It may be true that we missed our vocation, trying to become priests. Yes, it's possible. But where we are, we are doing well. And uh, if I don't know, do go, please. I'll go a closing prayer. Please stand up. So when we're talking about old boys of St. John Cross Seminary, it comprises Mandy Chiri Father, Mandy Nature Father. So you can see him. He's a Reverend Father. He's our member. Father, you're welcome. So I thank all of you for coming. At this juncture, I need to pay homage to my immediate family, to my dear wife, Dr. Damadi. I want to say that I could not have married better. I couldn't have married better. She's always there for us, the family, always on her knees praying. If you ask me her major characteristic, I would say it's prayer. So we thank God. <laughs> we thank God. As far as I'm concerned, she bothers herself for everything about me. As far as I'm concerned, bothers herself everything about me. You want to tell you what you eat, what you will not eat. That thing you eat, when you will eat it. I'm telling you, you are sitting down too long. Please walk around. Say what? Your urine is too colored. Drink more water. Have you checked your sugar? All these things. So, hey dear, thank you so much. Yes. Sometimes I will be complaining, you know. In a macho man, I will be complaining. Everyone has someone to look at their mom. I cannot thank God enough for giving me very homely children. Tinaza. Where's Gina? Stand up now. Chair Maria. Yes. Thank you so much. You know, lecturers don't have money. So this is my children understand that lecturers don't have money. So the much I provide, they do with it. So Chinaza, thank you so much. 
And then there's uh, my only daughter, Chide Muhammad, is a doctor. Because of tooth, she's not here. So when you talk to your sister, tell her that I. I'm also highly indebted to my numerous friends who took it upon themselves to support me in this inaugural. There are so many. Mr. Pius Ude, don't know whether he has reached. He has not reached. Yes. Mr. Pius Ude, Professor and Dr. Mrs. Sosi Okanya. These are my friends that have come to my assistance, so I have to confess and say it. Inaugural lecture is not easy. That's why you went to Kennedy Sufuni Alamaka. My in laws, the Ozo Konko family, came to my aid. I thank God for them. Dr. Amadi Amadi of Shell Petroleum. Now I'm going to answer what can I share? Oh, Amadi Amadi. Yes. Martin Sanyebu, Professor and Dr. Pascal Okoli. Professor Ike Yoke, Dr. Boniface Madukolo of Fiscal Planning, Eminent Titus Mudo with the bunch, Dr. Gani Olaho, Engineer Richard Ochi, Engineer Victor Ochi, Chris Nji, Eminent, Modestus Aji, Victor, okay, Professor S.K. Olonumaye. My colleagues at Ilori, they sent money. Dr. Pauline Umaneto, don't be shy that I'm calling you, but she assisted me. Dr. Ngozi, okay, okay. Professor Suit, Ngozi, thank you so much. Fred Ugodu, all those people. Professor Stan and uh, Udedi, our dean. Udedi, now. dean, yes. So, dear dean, I'm going to you. Same on the load that raised will help you to carry it. And so they remove tension from you. You can see I'm very last. Yes, very, very last. They remove tension from me. Finally, finally, as a teacher, I would have loved to ask you, I would have loved to say that, but the inaugural lecture, Nearly immunity and that's your question. So I'll just say thank you for coming. Congratulations. This is wonderful. The 89th inaugural lecture of this university has been delivered by Professor Jude Ezejofo Amadi, done and dusted. Congratulations. Please, can you have your seat for a while? We really, please, can we sit? We really want to appreciate him for the job well done, less 10 minutes less 10 minutes so he managed his time very well this is great we had such last week less 15 minutes and that is what we want to be having so congratulations i want to acknowledge some of our colleagues here eminent professors the dean of biosciences professor Ibilo. Yes. The former dean of the Faculty of Physical Sciences, Professor Obuagu, the former provost of um, Omoze, Rector Omoze. You're welcome, sir. Professor Ibeze, you're welcome, sir. Professor Uzudi, Uzidi, Uzundu, sorry. Professor Uzundu, 
You're welcome. And um, last but one inaugural lecture presenter today, we have given birth to another inaugural lecture presenter. Please, can you stand? She was the one that presented Professor Josephine Okoli from the Faculty of Education. In fact, the Faculty of Education has been doing it for more than two months. And so we had a breathing space today. Thank you very much for giving us <laughs> that breathing space. And so, welcome, Adair Vice Chancellor, ably represented by Adair Academic advisor to the Vice Chancellor, Professor J. F. J. C. Odibo, to come. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yes, I will have to invite the chairman. Is the chairman that will invite the Vice Chancellor for the decoration? Okay, two more persons. So Chike and Ibeze from Esut. Where is he? You're welcome. Professor Kalistos Okonkwo. Are you here? From Alice Ekweme Federal University. You're welcome. Yeah, it's good to appreciate people. And so I will call on the chairman inaugural lecture committee to begin the ceremony for the decoration of the inaugural lecture presenter of today. Professor Owakwe. <laughs> Son of Owakwe. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, may I have your permission to invite you to the podium to do the needful in respect of the UNICEF Ignite inaugural lecture, sir? Professor Jude, is it your fault? Amadi. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. This is Professor Jude Ezejofo Amadi. On behalf of the University Inaugural Lecture Committee, I confirm that Jude Amadi has successfully delivered Namdazikwe University 89th Inaugural Lecture. He is now qualified to be admitted into the register of inaugural lecturers. This is a kindly decorate him in the presence of these people and our virtual audience. This is her. Professor Jude Ezejiofo Amadi, on behalf of uh, the University Governing Council, the Senate, the Vice Chancellor and staff and students of Nanda Zikiwe University, Yorka, I decorate you as the 89th inaugural lecturer of this noble university in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Thank you very much, Adia Vachinsolo, for performing that task very well. I would like us to also appreciate Professor Ekwalo for the well-delivered citation. 
Yes. Yeah, he did it very well. And so we are not going to have any inaugural lecture, a lot inaugural lecture again this month, but we'll start again in the month of September. To be precise, uh, 14 September 2023. And that will be delivered by the former VC's wife, Professor Ahaneku, Gladys Ahaneku. And so I will call on a member of the inaugural lecture committee. A member of this inaugural lecture committee, Professor um, Obuagu, to please come and give the vote of thanks. My vice chancellor, sir, ably represented Okugo, the inaugural lecturer and wife. Congratulations. The chairman of the inaugural lecture committee, very distinguished professor. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And in a special way, the men and women on gown. Uh, let me uh, by say one or two things before I say final whatever I want to say. I remember you were in Lori, and when, when um, you mentioned Professor uh, Onyago, and Onyago once told me one day we were greeting you somewhere that when he was living in Lori, we were asking him, Why do you want to live in Lori? Where are you going to? I am glad to see that you are very happy that you came to UNIZIC. So I want to say congratulations for you know, coming in 2010. I came from Sokoto myself, and I remember that whenever, whenever I was coming from Sokoto, I'll meet Tonyago at Contagora, and we'll come down together. And we came down at about the same time. So thank you for joining UNIZIC. My dear Vice Chancellor, son, let me thank you in a special way for sustaining the inaugural lecture. If you go to the back, if you go to the back and look at the former lectures, you see that there was there were gaps, but now the gaps are not there again. And the important thing about it, the beauty about it is that he said something that he would have done 2017. One thing led to another. A lot of people want to do, want to present. This is uh, thank you for giving this opportunity for people that want to present to do that. I recognize the uh, former, the most recent before you, Professor Josephine, who spoke, that was last week. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm to give a vote of thanks to the inaugural lecturer, to the vice chancellor who has made, made it possible, to the men in gown who have uh, enriched what we are doing here, to everybody especially the former students of the seminary school. I hope you're not missing, Father, I hope you are not missing him at the altar. And then you said something very beautiful about your wife. Because without taking too much time, Akbakume community, Please, you're most cordially welcome to the university to produce more of uh, this type of person. We continue to praise God for his gift to your community and to UNISIC. I thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much for thanking us, Professor Ubuag. We are moving. I also want to say that um, I migrated to 
from the University of Ibadan to this place, and some people are say, asking me, why are you here? Why are you migrating? Even um, in the last inaugural lecture, I said, I am happy being here. And so I will call on our Reverend Father to give us the closing prayer. Father. Father Ono. Father Ono Bugo. My name is Father Stanislaus Ono Dugo. Ono Duga Direbuma. Yes. Please, may we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Oh God, we thank you for the wonder of your being. We thank you for the gift you have endowed mankind with. You created the world and gave to man and said, increase and multiply and subdue the earth. Lord, in obedience to your word, we are here today learning about plant pathology, the diseases and defenses of plants. It is in a way we are trying to conquer our environment and subdue the earth as your word has instructed. We ask you, O oh Lord, that this knowledge we have, we have gathered today will go a long way to improving our standard of living in this world. We ask you to bless us, bless this university and her management, bless the paper presenter today. May his knowledge continue to grow and expand. And may it continue to impact on young minds. We ask you, O oh Lord, upon all those who have gathered here today to listen to this lecture, may their lives never remain the same again. May they improve on what they knew before coming here. And we ask you to lead us safely all to our various homes as we depart from here, that your name may continue to be glorified. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and protect you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And my humble self is Professor Nkiru Teresa Melodu, commanding Faculty of Agriculture, Professor of Food and Nutrition Security. And so we're going to recess in reverse order after UNISIC anthem, which means that the vice chancellor representative will lead, followed by inaugural lecturer, and then all others in gown. Thank you very much. The UNISIC anthem.
Please, uh, you can move over to the uh, Osaka Center of Social Sciences for Entertainment. It's just over there. Professor Osaka Center there for entertainment and light refreshment, please. 